Welcome to the Northern Knits Podcast. We are two friends in fiber who knit, craft, and share a slightly nerdy skewed lifestyle across the provincial borders of Mexico. Slightly. Not, not Who's dare. slightly nerdy here? <laughs> Neither no, of us. Nothing, nothing slight about it. Not even remotely. You see, you see that painting desk in the background? That's a Warhammer 40k miniature painting desk right there. This is nothing slight about it. My screen hides the nerd from everybody. <laughs> uh, I am Jocelyn. My co-host is Diana. And in theory, we primarily talk about knitting. Do we, though? Do we? Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes we don't. It's late on a Sunday evening, so we are drinking tea, and I'm going to eat cookies because I haven't had dinner yet. <laughs> late on a Sunday evening also means less filter and more rambling so good luck future editing jocelyn future jocelyn is so stoked so <laughs> stoked present jocelyn can already tell <laughs> this might be an extra long episode depending on how determined no. jocelyn is <laughs> oh yeah hey sometimes sometimes there are long episodes because i give up <laughs> and i'm done <laughs> oh goodness all right I suppose. <sighs> What's in your cup, Miss Diana? I brought the tin of tea over here because I remembered to, and I'm proud of myself for this, which is why I'm long-windedly announcing this. <laughs> okay, it's late on a Sunday night, as we just determined. <clears throat> I have some Let's Detox rooibos tea from For Tea's Sake. This is the only uncaffeinated tea I have that doesn't have chamomile in it. Because if I was drinking chamomile tea, I, I'm halfway through my cup of tea. I would be pretty much asleep right now. So I had to... This is my only choice. I need more red tea in my collection. I have green tea and black tea and one box of chamomile. And I, I need more options for non-caffeinated tea, I think. Well, now that you've told the universe, it'll happen. This may have been a mistake. <laughs> I feel like an excellent mistake. Now this one's got um, where did it say? It's got rooibos, nettle, raspberry, licorice root pieces, anise, clove, calendula, and safflowers. Okay, that sounds like a good tea. I don't know. It's herby. It's not my favorite, but it's fine. It's herby. It's herby. <laughs> I, it's the licorice. It really comes through. Okay. The licorice and the anise. Well, anise, like anise. Anise, I think. I don't know. Somebody correct my pronunciation of this word. I don't know either, so there. It's on the internet. Somebody will correct me. Uh, yes, as soon as we get up onto the internet, somebody will correct you. That's just kind of how the internet works. All right. I am just joining a strand of yarn here. I am drinking my all-time favorite. I drink so much of this. I order it six boxes at a time from uh, Lady A because... You can't find it in stores where I am most of the time. I'm drinking some Goodnight Blend from Twinings. It is a chamomile fennel blend, which is at least once a day, if not twice a day, I'm drinking the giant mug of this stuff. I really like it. So it's a good tea. It's a really freaking good tea. And uh, given my uh, digestive tracts need to be a drama queen of Southern Belle proportions from, you know, 1920s television. Ooh. Very handy tea for me to have. I a delicate constitution and it, it annoys me. It annoys me <laughs> how much stomach trouble I have. Just drives me bunkers. And you might see me eating the Jocelyn Safe cookies because um, I needed a, a new thing of water which just meant in my brother-in-law's mind, he should just bring all my groceries home today. So he did. And I went, sweet. Because on the list, it was like, and if there's money left over, I would like cookies. <laughs> and he's like, didn't even look at the total. Just put cookies in the cart. <laughs> I'm like, good man. Good man. <laughs> <laughs> so that happened for me today. So I have fresh bakery cookies. They will be good. It's because I haven't had dinner yet and I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm well, like, what are you doing not having dinner yet? It's like, Finishing things. Asa gave me orders. I was <laughs> under instructions. <laughs> okay, nobody said you couldn't eat. Well, I'm pretty sure Asa's like, no, no. There was no eating in that instruction set. Asa told me to finish the body of my flat white sweater. <laughs> so I was doing as instructed. 
<laughs> Mostly I just forgot how late it was, and then it was like, oh man, we gotta record. <laughs> it's really not Austin's fault. I'm just gonna blame her, because she's not here, and she can't defend herself. I kept a comment underneath, Jocelyn! <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> <sighs> you know me i just i'll never forget to drink but i'm constantly forgetting to feed myself <laughs> i will never be dehydrated I'll, I'll, I'll be the other way around i'll never forget to eat but i will forget to drink yeah. if it's not there in front of me i will forget to drink water and then i'll it'll be like the middle of the afternoon i'm like man i'm tired and i've got this headache and like i don't know what's wrong with me like, oh wait you haven't had any water in like the last six hours Mm -hmm. Duh. So maybe that's why we convention so well together because I'm constantly walking around with beverages and finishing them so I'm making sure you have them too and you make sure I stop and eat it's probably why we do so well at those things together could be we balance each other's uh, personality quirks alright um, I, I have been wearing one thing this week on and off it's been my campfire cardigan which is a crochet cardigan that I made out of some uh, lovely Karen cake yarn uh, I'm not wearing it right now because we're recording and I'm literally staring into a very bright light getting warm while my hair dries because I showered. And then I put my hair up in a bun and six hours later went, right, my hair's still wet. <laughs> as you do when you have thick, long hair. As you do. As you do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, I know. Oh, Lord. All right, so that's, that's it for me. It's still 30 plus degrees most days, so I don't, I do not wear it very often. And I never wear any cool threads outside. <laughs> Yeah, one day. One day it'll be cool again. We were only a high of 27 today, if that helps. Ooh, well, we got into the 30s. The we get down to like 18 degrees sometimes at night. What's the temperature right now? The sun's down. What, what's the temperature right now? It says, it still says 25. Cool. That's gross. That. Yeah, was that seriously? Mm. Wow, Weird. yeah, that's that's up to date. 25 feels like 32 and the sun is down. Oh my god. <laughs> ew. Ew. <laughs> ew, I'd say. Yeah, I'm I'm sitting here oh. next to the air conditioner in a linen shirt and I'm like, it's I'm damp. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's so too warm. <laughs> <sighs> At least the air is moving. That helps. It helps a lot. All right. So, shall we talk knitting? Yes. I have three things this week. I and have more. I always have at more. At last count, you have, I believe, five. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. All right. Well, why don't you start us off? <laughs> Man. All right. So, I'm still doing some bits and pieces pickup work for the Simple Hug. It's sort of the thing I knit on when I can't be looking at my knitting. Uh, so Zoom meeting calls, chats, and while we record. So I'm mid-row on a stripe, so I've made some progress. Not a ton of progress, but that garter, that garter squish is really starting to show up. Yeah, that's so really apparent. I am holding two strands of uh, cotton together. One's a worsted, one's a DK, because I'm using a size eight millimeter needle and I'm not doing mohair and I knit fairly tight so this will be a nice dense 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 squishy squishy dude so I'm doing it to keep track of my rows as I complete them um, I could count garter bumps but what I've decided instead is I really want to use these clover stitch markers and attach a clover stitch marker every time I complete a round so it marks the right side the start of my right side row and when I get to 10 of them I know it's time to switch colors Nice. So that is a way to do it. It's a way to do it without uh, causing my brain any actual thinking. <laughs> but I am definitely making this out of scraps. It's definitely a scrappy cotton project. The worsted weight is a skein. It's a big skein of uh, Burnett Handcrafter cotton. And then the blues that I'm holding it with are modern uh, DK cotton. So I even found and scrounged up, I think, enough purple modern DK cotton to make one of the two row repeats in purple. Nice. Otherwise it's going to be a blue white kind of thing. But uh, I'm enjoying it because it's nice and relaxing and I don't have to look at it. And there's something to be said for chill knitting. I'm a fan of chill knitting. That mm -hmm. is 80% mm -hmm. of what I knit. 
which I think is fair. Uh, do you want me to keep going? I suppose I should, hey? Yeah, do one more. Do one more? Okay. So while we were creating show notes today, I told Diana we had to take our time doing it because I promised, because Asa was like, just finish the body. Asa, I finished the body. <laughs> <laughs> So I am done knitting the body of my flat white. This is the Patreon cow knit that me and Diana are hosting for our Patreon members. Um, my flat white is a color work pullover sweater. Somewhere in here I have a little snowflake progress keeper. I don't know if I can get that to flash on screen. Whoopsie daisies. I gotta be careful. It's I've hiding in my, a fold. I've got my, well I'm not a tiny person. I've got my uh, headphones plugged in today. So I did a lot of body knitting. Yeah. A lot of body knitting. Like zoom. Ooh. Easily. Oh my goodness. I'm six inches for my hand. And I got what, like two hands worth? So about twelve inches of twelve inches of worsted weight knitting got done. But it does mean that it's off the needles. So if I'm careful, we can actually show off the color work at the top now. So I am ready to good pick up the sleeves. The sleeves are on uh, not waste yarn, but four millimeter needles that I just literally, literally have so many pairs of four millimeter needle needles. I can do that. So I saw last week, week before, there was a tutorial on sweater sleeves two at a time. Ooh. So I'm going to watch that tutorial now because now I'm ready to pick up my sleeves and I'm going to attempt sleeves two at a time. I like this plan a very great deal and you should share that with me because doing that for my fade would be really helpful getting my fades to match up. That's what, that's what I was thinking. Sometimes my decreases aren't um, perfect and when I'm wearing it, you can't tell, but you can tell when you're folding and putting the sweater away and sometimes that just irritates me a little. But I'm like, well, if I'm just doing them at the same time, the decreases will occur at the same time. So I'm going to watch that and do that. But this will, should be my very first finished color work project ever. So I'm doing really good. I have very small number of artisanal details, which are good. They're staying. If I don't like them when I'm done, I will duplicate stitch. Well, let's be honest, guys. We'll be lucky if I've woven in the ends on the inside of the sweater. <laughs> this is being made out of some Knit Picks yarn. It is a winter blue and a wintry white because, guys, it's a snowflake pattern. The Yoke has snowflakes. And I double checked my collar before I did my hem, and I only did one by one ribbing for an inch, which I thought had been what I did because I hate ribbing. So I knit till I only had to do one by one ribbing for an inch. <laughs> and then I did my um, standard super, uh, my standard stretchy bind off for clothing and stuff. So, which is um, in pattern. So, like if you knit two, purl two, um, knitting through the back loop or purling through the back loop two together and then slipping them off the or yeah so knit I'm going to do it as though it's knit because adding pearls complicates things so I knit the first stitch and then I put it back on the dom on the on the needle and then I knit two together through the back loop which dramatically increases your stretch without having to make it a fancy border <laughs> so my uh my uh border here I'll stretch it for Diana oops Trying to catch, not catch my headphones. So I'll stretch for Diana. And that's what it does before blocking. Ooh. So very stretch. I gain a couple of inches over the whole course of the whole body. So that'll work. So hopefully next week I have sleeves on the needles. We'll see. I'll put this on the floor and the cat will find it because she loves nitpicks. <sighs> Every time. <laughs> I have a photo of her under the table while I was playing um, Trajan last week, <laughs> which I won. Keep an eye out for the zombies. The apocalypse is coming. Um, <laughs> I won a strategy game against Mr. B. Like that never happens. No, nah, I, you, you I can keep that. <laughs> I can eke out a magic win every once in a while, but like never strategic board game win. Um, so it's fine. Whatever. It's I won. It's good. I won by a lot. It's fine. Not the end of the world. But she was lying on my nitpicks because I would drop the sweater to do my turn, and then. Sometimes he thinks and takes time because he knows I'm busy. I'm just sitting happily knitting. I'm fine for him to sit and take as long as he wants to decide his turn. I'm going to be sitting knitting. I dropped the sweater. I went to go pick the sweater up and I realized there was a cat on it. So I stopped and took a photo. What we didn't get was a photo we'd gotten up and took a break to make food. We didn't get a photo because we didn't have our phones on us um, of Phaedra standing up on the table in Mr. Ben's spot looking like she was going to play a turn. That would have been a great shot to get, but we didn't, we didn't have our phones. She wasn't going to stay once we started moving. So... <laughs> 
<laughs> I can so imagine that. That's so cute. Yeah, yeah. So she totally did that. So uh, your go, I guess. Yes, yes. All right. Well, you talked about your Patreon sweater, so I guess I'll talk about my Patreon sweater, which I shoved off to the side here and is now covered in stuff. <clears throat> okay. Let's hold it so the sweater is right way up. This is the Comfort Fade cardigan. I have completed my color B and I am just about to start fading into my color C, which is purple and white instead of purple and gray because my first color was gray. Sweet. So then we go purple gray and then we're going to go purple white and then we're going to go just purple purple. Then we're just going to go purple purple. <laughs> purple purple. I think that's the last color is just darker purple. Uh, I think so, yeah. But uh, the fade works so well on the pearl side. Like, it's just about, it's just about seamless. Uh, you can kind of tell on, like, the purpley stripe here, but. There's like, the body parts but, like, everywhere. Do you need <laughs> stuffing? Body parts everywhere. I just, I just have body parts everywhere. Show wow. <laughs> Body parts everywhere. Oh. Yeah, that's, uh, that's but the knit side is also really pretty, and I'm like, it just it just looks really good. And I think now that I'm looking at this slightly further back than I normally look at it, I'm like, I want a stripey cardigan. So I've got sweaters on the brain now that I've started making sweaters, and mm -hmm. I just want to make all the sweaters. There was one that um, Laura did from uh, the Knit More Girls. Like I'd have to go like way back to find it, but she did one where it was a, a cardigan pattern, but she made it striped. So I may, I may try to track that pattern down. But there's a couple of really good stripey cardigan patterns. And I mean, honestly, it would be. If we can figure out how to do sleeves two at a time, <laughs> a stripey cardigan pattern will be easy. Because I'm with you. I think I need a good stripey cardigan. Oh, yes. I split for sleeves today. Did you? So I have, uh, I have a thing I can actually try on now. It's, it's like a, it's a shrug. It's, it's, a shrug? it's, totally, it's totally a shrug that doesn't even come down like an inch below my armpits but whatever <laughs> so you know it fits that's that's great that's the important part that's this the is the first time part. i've been able to try it on so it fits and you know that's good uh yeah i'll try the sweater on once we're done recording <laughs> uh so this is the comfort fade cardigan by i actually don't remember who at this point <laughs> somebody else knows Andrea everybody Mallory? knows the yeah that's the one Everybody knows what this one's made by. Um, oh, and the yarn is from Sew Into Knitting. Sew is in Needle and Thread, uh, which is a Manitoba dyer. I bought the kit at the Manitoba Fiber Festival probably two, two years, years ago. ago. Two years ago. So, this is looking, it's looking really good. I'm really excited about this. I just remember. I right. really wish I could keep this on because... It's really it's cute, cute, but you would melt to death. I am, in fact, melting to death actively right now. Mm-hmm. Gotta recommend not doing the melting to death part. I'm also really scared. I'm gonna pop the end caps off of these needles. Oh, jeez. Okay, I'm just gonna like really awkwardly like. Dude. Oh no. <laughs> With the waist yarn in the sleeves, they're just a little bit tight. The sleeves are not tight. Just the way I did the waist yarn, they're a little bit tight. Uh huh. I'm just watching you be awkward on the internet. Yeah. Oh god. Now it's wrapped all the way around me. Oh. <laughs> I'm highly professional. Hey, I did it, and I didn't pop any stitches off. I almost did, but I I didn't. We're just gonna we're just gonna take this. We're gonna put it down over here, nice and safe. I'm gonna not do that again because that was a little bit stressful. Oh my word! All right, welcome back to the introduction of the random body parts. Ooh, body parts. Body parts. And random strange hourglass shape that equal nothing until I sew the random body parts to the random hourglass shape. Guys, I'm making a teddy bear. But right now, I have two hands, two ears, one nose, a singular foot, and a body. I still got to do a foot and a tail then, and a bow. And then I can sew this together. I'm going to make the bow in a different color. And then I will have a little tiny red teddy bear. Cute. Teddy bear. This is the first time I've done this pattern, um, and Diana looked up the lady, because I made a project page. Everybody take a moment. There's a project page. It's there's amazing. Page. It's amazing. So Are there pictures is... on it? No. <laughs> no. But there's a project page. Maybe I'll take a picture of the body parts and the body before it put together, because it just looks creepy. 
It really does, especially we've got just this handful of body parts just dangling. Just a hand. Well, it's because you need the strings on the end to sew the body parts on. I know, but it just it just looks creepy when you've got yeah. a handful of band body parts. The foot looks very foot like, though. Yeah. Okay. The, yeah, the foot is very foot like. Obviously, I haven't finished it, so it's not properly footed. That's a word. Um, so this is the first time I'm making a pattern by this lady. Um, I really like her stuff. So if I like the teddy bear, I'll be making more of her things because she's got some freaking cute patterns. It is a crochet amagamarumi. Am amagurumi? I, I don't know. We can I don't know never, the proper pronunciation. We never say it right. Um, this one is a uh, worsted weight yarn done. Uh, it says to be done on a four millimeter needle. I did it on a 4.5 millimeter needle. So it's a little bit bigger. It's a little bit looser, but it's for me. It's not for children. So I know better than to eat stuffing. But it does mean that surrounding my computer, I literally pulled out some fiber fill and I literally have cloudy fiber fill sitting on top of one of my keyboards to remind me I need to finish my foot because I'm short of foot. Short of foot. I think I'm going to because I literally, like my scrap yarn was by my computer. I've got a little bit of leftover white from the flat white color work. I might make my bow and do like a little white button nose or something like so a little nose on and stuff. That'd be cute. So that or I could do it in like blues or grays. Like I got options, but I, uh, that's, that was that. I needed something small to work on that's very satisfying. And putting together the body parts, like each body part is a complete thing. And you're like, ha, I did a thing. I've been working on some big projects lately. Yeah. Yeah. Sweaters and blankets are like that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, should I talk about my crochet blanket? And then we just have the 8-bit sweaters left? Sure. Sure. It's done. Oh, I have uh, this thing that I'm working on right here, which I'll mention real quick because it's really boring. I'm working on a sock. It's the same sock as last week. It's the second sock of a pair. Online super socks. Green self-striping there. We're done. It's boring. It's the same it's the same <laughs> sock. It's the boring sock. I don't think, you know, the husband finds it boring since it's... No, he's really excited about these. He's super on board. It's, they're for him. Uh, by the time you guys see this, there will be a photo of this blanket spread out on my bed because it's a huge blanket. But I finished the new heavy couch blanket. I made this on a nine millimeter size hook using half double crochets, literally holding two colors of scrap yarn together, one light, one dark. And then I cast on, or I made a chain of 120 stitches and away I went. And then I gave myself a nice gray border and I made that gray border a granny. So I did a single crochet round and then I did two rows of granny square to make a little like lacy-ish border without having to do a complicated lace and a really bulky yarn on a really bulky needle. Because <laughs> it's like, I don't want to do that. So this is huge. This is glorious. I am actually just sleeping under it on the bed because it's big enough. That looks really good. So um, I'll, I'll post a photo because this is six feet of blanket in length. I cannot hold it up. There's more blanket than screen size. <laughs> more blanket than screen size. Phaedra I'm still likes to uh, cuddle me while I'm sleeping in it, but I've literally just had it on top of my bed. And I like last two nights, I've been so tired when I went to bed, I just pulled that over me and went to bed and it's been amazing. It's been delightful. A touch heavy, but I live in the basement. So uh, I think for me, that's it except for the eight bit sweater. So same here, cool. eight bit sweater. Uh, eight bit sweater time. Do you want to gloat? Shall I go first and then you can do some gloating? Sure, that, that I'm ahead of you on a thing for once, but it doesn't really count because you were learning and redid your first clue in like <laughs> three days. Here is sleeve one, which is clue one and clue two of the 8-bit sweater. I am making mine out of some amazingly lovely Briggs and Little Sport weight yarn in a dark gray and a creamy white. Uh, we had, I had to redo clue one. I still have some beautifully bad artisanal details that I just honestly don't care about. I've got some square grids that are out. I will block it. And if it bothers me after blocking, I will duplicate stitch over them. So on the reverse side, I got a spot where I've got a really big gray square. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing, but I was doing something, guys. So I did it. I only had to go up two rows. Um, I checked gauge count, but I did not check my row count. Turns out my row count is quite different. So mine too. To I'm getting honest. a lot of distance, which is great because I like a longer sleeve. But I just did a couple of extra rows of 
chart B, which is this nice little square chart, instead of trying to get a whole other star in, because I would have been too long. It would have been way too long. So it fits great. I can actually put it on. Um, but did I start clue three? <laughs> no. Did clue four come out today? <laughs> you bet. Um, may I have to, I might have to switch my sleeves around, because again, I knit in backwards in the round. So I've got, uh, you know, some things going on. Like I got a couple of loose loopies here that I got to tack down. The stars weren't super good, but if I wear the sleeve on the right side, <laughs> my uh, inside is on the outside. <laughs> like, well, oh, that's not going to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you want to put the increased lines on the inside. Increased lines on the inside. So here we are, all sleeved up. I have, there's no blocking, so like I'm still going to gain a bit of length. So I'm doing well. I'm up to my armpit where I'm supposed to be. But, you know, have I started clue three or four? <laughs> no. Four came out today. Haven't even started the ribbing on three. Do you know why? Because I looked at the little little post-it note I had in my my flat white bag, and I did my uh, ribbing when I cast on on my five millimeter chow goo or sorry my uh, yeah my five millimeter chow goo needles, and I'm knitting the sweater on the five millimeter chow goo needles. So when I finished the sleeve, I saved the needles because I only have one set of five millimeter chow goos to do the. Um, bottom edging so I gotta catch up I got two clues to knit this week it's a sleeve it's gonna be a week of sleeves next week maybe There's so many sleeves but so Diana sleeves. is officially ahead of me if she finished clue three I did in fact finish clue three last night Ooh, boy, oh. and I have looked at clue four but I have not started it yet I haven't even looked do you want to know what it is or should I keep it secret no 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 spoil it for me okay it's uh the Mario mushrooms to go with the Mario stars oh my god I'm so excited. I love those it's mushroom things. Three rows. Well, I guess two rows probably to match of the uh, one-up mushrooms. Yeah. Yeah. But oh. the bottom part of the sleeve is Space Invaders. And I'm so happy. They're so cute. I can't wait. Space Invaders and little spaceships. Space oh. Invaders. And then more of the really lovely checkered pattern that I'm not sure if I like looking at it all that much, but I love knitting it. It's a very soothing pattern for some reason. <laughs> She'll make the sweater and go, but I can't stare at it too often because. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure how my eyes feel about it, but my hands like knitting it. So, eh. so I'm really excited to get into my mushrooms. Man, I got to knit like mad to catch up. Ooh. These are just so freaking cute. I'm so excited and I'm so glad that they don't match. I was oh. so ready for them to match. Yeah, I was and then worried. And they didn't and it was just extra delight. I love that it doesn't match. Like it would have been fine with it if it matched. I expected it to match, but I'm so excited that it doesn't. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing mine out of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes in Oyster Heather for my light color and... Midnight Heather, I think, for my dark color. The ball bands are in the other room. Mm. I'm finally into my second ball of the dark. Uh, I think this is my third ball of the light, and I'm a good halfway through this one. So the light color is going away way faster. And mm. I'm using my polyhedral dice stitch markers for this one because, you know, you got to make it extra nerdy. Got my D20 is my round marker, and then the uh, D8 and the D4 is my increase markers that makes sense because like i'm going through my white a lot quicker than i'm going through my gray i'm still working on yeah. my first balls but i mean i have 100 gram skeins so i might make it to the end of second sleeve with ball one i might have to start a second ball before i get to the end of first one but eh, it's fine i cannot remember where i got which booth did i get these stitch markers at it was at knit city 2018 the oh that's the one where we got um they they were the ones that had the uh, penis stitch markers yeah was that was that at black cat's booth yes it was okay yeah because we i bought i bought that skein of yarn mayor from titty city yes that yeah. was it yeah. i still regret not getting the sailor scout skeins of yarn like i want sailor neptune's yarn so bad it's not even funny I love their booth. The people in there were delightful. Their yarn was amazing. Their base names and their names for their yarn was yeah, fun, freaking fantastic. So good. So good. Loved it. I should see Space if, they, invaders. if I sent some money to the um, unofficial official intern if she would pick me up some and bring it home. 
when she comes home. Oh, maybe. This. She might. <coughs> I'm so excited the level of nerd in <laughs> this sweater. I am so excited that you were on top of it because if you fall behind, that's it. You're done. <laughs> This is probably going to be my ugly, and heavy quotations, Christmas sweater this year. Heavy quotations. Oh, that's going to be an amazing Christmas sweater. And it was so fit with the family. Right next <laughs> Christmas- to Mr. Mr. Diana's... Um, his, He's got uh, a Warhammer one. The Warhammer one. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, you guys are going to be so nerdy. And it's disgusting how cute you two are when you photograph. It is it is distressing to all of us other mortal humans who do not you photograph. You do photograph of obs- obscenely well. You two photograph obscenely. Not that you're not it's, beautiful people in person. You just photograph obscenely well and it annoys It's the It's because his mom takes a bazillion pictures and so being photo ready at an instant becomes a survival mechanism if you want to like do anything other than pose for photos for the entire time. You two are a disgustingly cute couple, and I need that photo in my life. So when this sweater is done, and you're uh, wherever you are for Christmas this year, um, because the pandemic could absolutely throw things out of whack, um, I want yeah. a photo. I want I'll a photo. F- we'll find a pretty outdoor Christmas tree somewhere and take pictures in front of it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Because that so needs to happen in those super nerdy sweaters. <laughs> And this sweater, this double thick wool sweater, pretty sure I can wear this at like minus 10. Are you kidding me? First good snowstorm we have, which for Winnipeg usually happens just before Christmas. Like everybody gets really antsy that we won't have snow for Christmas. And then like on late years, it shows up just before. I'm outside. I'm outside. It's going to be dark. There's going to be snow. There's going to be me and whatever family member. I sucker into it. Uh, And... Uh, or Ben, if there's no family member around, because he'll come help. And I'm going to get photos of me standing outside in, like, the first good snowfall when, like, there's snow on the ground. So, like, there's snow falling, and I'm in my 8-bit cardigan. It'll be a good picture. It was so good! So excited! Okay. Our gushing about our nerdy projects aside, I have got to seriously knit sleeves this week. Like, I... (laughs) The kid's uh-huh. coming home on Saturday, so I have to pull apart my binding on her sleeves on her um, flax sweater, and I have to uh, I have to unsew them, pull apart the binding, and then re put them together on a three needle bind off. Uh, well, you got to get on that. That's the first project because that needs to get done because the kid's coming home, and then I gotta finish. <laughs> I gotta do clue three and clue four. Uh, to catch up before the body knitting starts because I got a bigger body than Diana so there's more knitting involved uh, and get that ready and uh, if I go to visit my parents I cannot do eight hours of color work in the car because I need to see what I'm doing Mm -hmm. so if I'm smart about it uh, my flat white or my flat white my my, uh, simple hug will be going with me in the car (laughs) good plan I think that's my best plan Uh, it depends on where I get but I finished another blanket so much blanket and sweaterage this summer it's crazy if you think about it i have crocheted an insane amount this summer yeah holy crap is the stash noticeably smaller uh it is in fact less than half the china cabinet now that's an accomplishment Mm -hmm. and stuff that is left that's in the because i store my yarn in my china cabinet it's a big china cabinet uh the stuff that is in there has been marked for projects. So like I've pulled out the yarn for a project and that's what it's for, but just individual skeins or a couple of skeins together that I don't have a project for yet. I'm down to like a shelf in a bit. So like I have cut my stash in half, if not more over the summer. It's the scrappy projects, just pulling things out, looking at them and getting rid of the yarn that I just, I know I won't knit with and making a ton of scrappy projects have just helped clear out so much so good and also keeps gifting me patterns so <laughs> i gotta knit faster i gotta knit faster kidding me i keep finding patterns too i gotta stop watching podcasts which will never happen it's called <laughs> uh it's called the uh pink velvet i think it's pink velvet by andrew mallory i don't like it in the initial colors but i was watching one of the ladies doing podcasting about it and i love how she's made it a much stronger contrast on the color work yoke than having that yoke pop 
and having that background fade and like a darker color in the background with a nice bright oh it looks so much better and i'm just like well no that's going on my list mm-hmm. thanks thanks podcaster no really it's a good pattern thank you but <laughs> thanks podcaster because what i need is another sweater mm-hmm. absolutely well, of course of course my biggest fear is I'll try on the flat white and I think I have enough inchage and I'll put it on and decide I need a few more inches. In which case I'll knit the sleeves and then I'll pull out the binding and put the body back on the needles and knit that in the car <laughs> or the truck on the way up. I got to try it on first and see where it is. I'm at the required for me, but you never know for sure until you try it on whether yeah. that's the length or you need to, or you need to make it longer. So I will find that out here tonight when we're done recording i'll go put it on sounds good we'll see. i think that brings us to wool gathering it does our next patreon e knits in is saturday september the 19th mm-hmm. at 12 noon manitoba time is that still daylight time i think so i think savings time kicks in end of september this year end of september early october something like that one of the two if we say Noon 12 Manit- o'clock, Manitoba time. Manitoba time. <laughs> <laughs> and odds are good only one of the patrons will actually be in Manitoba. The rest of us will be elsewhere. <laughs> should really figure out what time it is in, like, U- UTC. Probably. GMT. That's well, central yeah, time zone. That's not everybody, not necessarily everybody knows that either. So it's, I don't think we'll be able to avoid the questions, period. It's just, it's just how it is. I'll just start listing all the common time zones. Yeah. Here it is in everywhere. No, that- I probably won't. It's just Manitoba time. Manitoba time. Uh, I have to Google the time change all the time because I am still super vague on time zones. I'm always like, what? Right. That's a weird time. Got it. Got it. Okay. I just let my phone handle it, and then when my phone doesn't match the things that aren't connected to the internet, I know the time change happened. You know, that's a good way of doing it. Uh, in about a month or so, my computers will be correct again. They're only right half the year. So, th- <laughs> you know, you can fix that, right? Sure. There's lots of things I can do. Am I going to? No. And I could give you a plethora of adult excuses. I'm too busy. The work week's been hard. Life's getting in the way. I mean, take your pick. I'm not going to do it. I'm gonna just, okay. I'm just going to be honest. I'm not going to do it. I won't, and I won't lie to you guys about it either. The clocks on my computer are only right for half the year. And I'm okay with that. All right. Doesn't bother. You do you. <laughs> me do me. I can't stand when my clocks are off by even like a couple of minutes. Like no, something's something's the central time here. Did you? Notice? Everything else will match this clock. There's a clock on my wall above my fireplace. It's only right twice a day. I don't know how long the batteries have been dead. <laughs> a good long time. A good long. And every time my parents come home, they're like, "Your clock needs new batteries." And I'm like, "I don't look at that clock. I have never looked at that clock. I only own that clock because you bought me that clock. That tells you how often I use that clock. And the reason I like that clock is because when you open up the face of the clock, there's a little secret hidden compartment behind it, and you can stick notes in there because that's what I use it for. <laughs> good use for it." I have a phone. If I need to know the time, I just ask. My phone just tells me. And my phone's always right because I set it up so it would always be right. And when I change provinces and go visit people, it asks me if I would like to update to my new provincial location. And I go, yes, please. And it just changes the time for me. Smart clock. Smart phone. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Phones are great that way. Love my phone for that. Oh, goodness. Um... Oh, though, speaking of phones on Super Tangents, mm-hmm. my new phone case came in. Oh, yes, the fancy thing. My super fancy new phone case. So fancy. So I really like that. Pretty. Apparently, I have a message from you, Diana. Text messages would like me to know that uh, you're ready to record whenever I am. <laughs> I assumed that you had seen that one since you called me shortly after. Apparently, I didn't open up the phone and take a look at that. So that's still sitting there for me when I'm ready for that notification. <laughs> oh, well, uh, you know, I'm ready to record whenever you are. Great. It's good to know. <laughs> Thanks. Jeez. <laughs> oh. 
All right, well, what, was, what else was happening? Oh, yeah, our, our next episode. Uh, next Sunday, Sunday, I guess. Yeah, Sunday. What time are we going to do that? I don't know what time on Sunday. I'm the one who's going to be up by 10 a.m. and okay to record at any point on Sunday. We just have to work around your schedule. Uh, my non-existent schedule? Okay, let's be honest. You're not going to get up Sunday before noon, or do you want to buy groceries before we record live, or would you like to record and then go buy groceries? And groceries after, obviously. Obviously. Okay, well then <laughs> let's say uh, 1 o'clock Manitoba time Sunday. Perfect. Which is 2 o'clock for you? That is 2 o'clock for me. Cool. We're going to do it live. We're going to do it live, which is why we're talking about this right now. We're doing it live. Again. Yeah, why not? My parents will be in town. It'll be day one of them being in town for a week. It's the start of the month. Both of us are busy. So let's just make everybody's lives easier except for the people who watch the live shows after their live because there's ads. I just That's how YouTube has got it set up. It's annoying, but... Eh. You have ads on your page? We're, are we monetized? Wait, we're not, what? We're not, but they will occasionally put ads on live streams that are saved. Oh, okay. I see. I see. Yeah. So today I not, learned we are not monetized. I'm like, I'm pretty sure we don't quite have the viewership for that. No, no, we don't even have 500 subscribers. So. Okay. <laughs> I was, I was pretty sure we were only about halfway there. Yeah, we are. Uh, we are what they call a tiny, tiny, tiny channel. <laughs> we're a tight knit community. Yeah. There we go. I like that way better. I like that way better. Let's go with that one. That's so amazing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay. no, it's, I so, proposed it, and yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna do it live next Sunday at one p.m. Manitoba time. We'll be doing it live mm -hmm. again, again, again. Sounds like a Britney Spears uh, video. <laughs> Oops. Uh, I'll uh, I'll set that up on the YouTube channel this week, probably after this episode goes up, just so it makes sense. And uh, so, if you watch us on YouTube, uh, you can subscribe there's a little dingy bell no way there's something you can do yeah. to be notified when the live stream starts how's, how's that wordage going for you would you like some help yes because honestly i've never done it i know it's possible but i actually don't know what you click on to get notified <laughs> when the live stream's gonna start best youtuber ever <laughs> the best i know this platform so well uh, if you are subscribed, you can click the little notification bell, and what it will do is it will send you a notification. And when we set up and prep for the live, you can actually go down and scroll just below the little icon that will probably be Diana's face, say we're doing it live again, uh, and it will say set reminder, and it will actually, YouTube will send you a reminder just before we go live. So you have two options for it. So you can get notified for everything, or you can get notified for when we go live. Perfect. I'm glad you know these things. That's why I'm the brains and you're the beauty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's as I punch my microphone again, <clears throat> do it with the other hand. Oh, proving my point. <laughs> <laughs> so proving my point. I am brain, you are pinky. Those are the rules. Because <laughs> everybody loves a good 90s TV show reference. Absolutely. I actually never watched that show. Oh, my word. I know. Oh my, okay, your geek streak, street cred just fell. Just okay. fix that. It's like not watching Gargoyles. Just fix that. I've also never seen that. Oh my heavens. In my defense, I was only nine when the millennium turned, so like I wasn't quite old enough for some of that stuff. You have been an adult for many years now. <gasps> And it's not that easy to find the 90s cartoons. Well, Disney Plus. Is that all Disney? Uh -huh. Gargoyles, oh. Darkwing Duck, Rescue Adventurers. I knew the, those two. I did not know Gargoyles. But okay, Gargoyles there we go. Is, is on Disney, yeah. Well, perhaps uh -huh. I can convince Mr. Diana to go pay for another streaming service <laughs> if I tell him Gargoyles is on it. They've got I know he'd be down of, to watch that. 
they've got a lot of the retro Disney stuff on there, as well as the new stuff that they're coming out with. So that it's not just Star Wars and Marvel that they have on there. They've also got a lot of the classics. They have some of the new stuff too, which is just in my mind weird, but I'm not a kid anymore. So, but there's like the Descendants, which is up your alley, not up Mr. Not up Mr. Chris's alley. He's just it's it's a it's it's a musical about the teenage descendants of villains and how they integrate back into um, the good people side of society. And it's, it's a musical. It's, and it's a musical, so like right there, no. It's a super cheesy musical, which is like you and me. Heck yes. Hardcore, I'm into this. Hardcore. Okay. Don't, don't watch it with Mr. Chris though, because no. And he's not. He's not good. But he he would enjoy the Mandalorian. He would enjoy the Clone Wars. Oh yeah. Would, like there's a lot of stuff on there he would enjoy. He just not that one. <laughs> yeah, he's not into musicals. But okay, okay. I'm I'm into this. There's I, three uh, of them. Okay. There, there are three like made for TV movies. Three. They're beautifully cheesy. They were so fun to watch. I haven't watched okay. them again because I promised my mom I'd watch them with her when I. <laughs> So you're watching them again this week when your parents are in town? No, because my dad is also not into cheesy musicals, so oh, we we'll okay. have to wait until I go out to Saskatoon to visit. Oh, okay, okay. So dad goes to work, and um, that's when we watch things like Sequest, DSB, and cheesy musicals. <laughs> okay. Sequest, DSB. <laughs> we made dad go find it. <laughs> So I don't actually know what that show is, but I had a Game Boy game of Sequest, oh. and I never understood what was going on other than there was a submarine. It's a big submarine, and one of the main characters is a teenage boy with a dolphin that he programs a computer for so the dolphin can talk. The dolphin's name is Darwin. Okay, I'm going to get a copy of it, and I'm going to make sure it goes out on a memory stick, or I somehow I give it to Ben so he can give it to Chris at Christmas. Like, that's getting into your hands. Okay. That is- that has not aged well at all. It sounds wonderful. Glorious. So good. Some stuff does, some stuff doesn't. It you look at it and you're like, oh man, 90s clothes. Just Yep. That's a, mm, 90s. That's a thing. That's a thing that happened. I wore that stuff. Oh no. <laughs> oh, oh. Super tangent. All right. Was that it for wool gathering? Uh, I just wanted to mention about the uh, Extra Life stream that I did on Thursday. So last week I was talking about how we were doing a Dungeons & Dragons stream um, to raise money for Extra Life. So for uh, Children's Hospital Foundations, help out sick kids, because everybody likes helping out sick kids. Mm -hmm. Uh, And Extra Life is a way of doing basically a gaming marathon instead of a running marathon, because, you know, we're nerds and we don't do running marathons. (laughs) Some nerds my, might. We some don't. nerds do. Some <laughs> nerds do. We don't. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> but we do gaming marathons. So we played Dungeons and Dragons with these ridiculous characters. I was playing a Kenku bard. A Kenku is a race that cannot speak except for mimicry. So I built myself a soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> and I had clips of songs and like explosion noises and the, the Wilhelm scream. And it was great. It was so good. And I turned, a, somebody donated, some jerk jo- donated a bunch of money to drop a dragon into the campaign. Love him. And <laughs> Don't even know who he is. Love him. Or her. <sighs> Love them. Wasn't me. How does that sound? <laughs> some wonderful person, which I suspect is one of our followers. Um, some wonderful person donated $100 to me before we even started streaming, so I got to start things off with an instance of the spell Wish. So I wished to turn the dragon into a sheep. (laughs) And then we raised like $600 more on other people's wishes to help me keep concentrating on the spell to keep the dragon a sheep. So all together... Over the course of this absurd four-hour stream, we raised $1,507.20 U.S. for children's hospitals Woo-hoo! in Manitoba and Ontario. That is Mostly so Manitoba. Good. That's fine. Bold is so, here, so. Yeah. So, um, thank you, anonymous person that I assume is one of you. For the $100. <laughs> that was so helpful for turning the dragon into a sheep. 
I believe so it is called a game changer. It was called a yes. game changer. Yes, it was great. Also, cheers to the person who donated enough for a dragon. Love you. <laughs> that also happened before the stream. So. Oh, so good. Oh, gosh. So we knew I going I, in. We knew going I, in. We were fighting I, a dragon. I wish I could claim that was me. That was not me. Oh, it was so great. It, was so it great. is the kind of dick maneuver I would do, though. <laughs> So we had a really great time. If any of you tuned in, thank you so much. And if any of you donated to me or anybody else, thank you so much. Uh, we're talking about doing it again because we had so much fun doing it. And so that'll probably be, we want to do it as a semi-regular thing. So probably every two to three months. Okay. We haven't settled on a next day yet. So, you know, I'll let everybody know when we're doing it again because it was really fun. Even if you can't afford to donate any money, if you just want to chime in on the twitch chat um even that was just really entertaining i think that brings us to books is it time for me to show off with how many books i've read in a week <laughs> yes how many books have you read this week 17 <laughs> oh my god i would not sleep if i had read that many that's an obscene number of books uh i finished three books and i gave up on a fourth right yes so I was doing uh, the last week of Tome Tobble round. I don't even know what round number we're on for that anymore. And I finished The Empire of Gold, uh, which was the third in a series I wanted to get done by S.A. Chacaborte. Still positive I'm not saying that right. So that's my current attempt at butchering that poor author's last name. It suffered uh, a fair bit from third book syndrome, which is sad because the series was really good up to that point. So it's like it finished things off and it was fine, but eh, eh, I don't particularly like the direction it took for everything. I like the villain's ending. Like, yes, the villain story wrapped up. Excellent. Uh, everybody, you know, good guys win in the end, whatever, it's good. Uh, so that was all fine, but I, the main protagonists... I always have a problem when friends become lovers in books because it always happens and it drives me nuts because boys and girls can be friends and not be romantically interested in each other. They can yes. be friends even if one of the two members is interested in each other. Just because one is doesn't mean the other automatically should. Yes. But if there's one interested and they happen to be friends and it's a boy-girl pairing, the other one will fall in love eventually. And I'm like, it doesn't always work that way. Yes. It does not always work. And I hate that in books it's portrayed that way very consistently. So yeah, it, it annoyed me something fierce. It annoyed me something fierce. So while they had good, good arcs and finishes, that just soured the book for me because I hate when they do that. I hate when they do that so much. So much I hate when they do that. Otherwise, the rest of the story was great. If we could just change that annoying piece about it, I'd be happy with it. Um, I did finish The Last of the Brent Weeks, which was Beyond the Shadows, but I can't remember if I finished it before we recorded last week or after we recorded last week. So I just threw it in this week because I can't remember. It's been a week. <laughs> I also do not remember. So that's the thing that happened. Uh, that did not suffer from third book syndrome. And that wrapped up great. I think I finished it just before we started recording last week, but I'm not 100% sure. I was going to read The Royal Assassin by, oh man, Robin Hobb. Uh, I got about halfway to two thirds of the way through and then I just, I couldn't connect with the characters again. Um, so I was like, no, no. I remember the story from book one, which I read way too many years ago and it was fine but i couldn't i couldn't connect so i let it go and then tom topple finished which was fine i still read what four giant books in two weeks so it's like i still read a lot of books mm -hmm. so that's fine i decided this weekend i was going to take a break so i went to light and fluffy and i listened to alpha night by nalini singh which i own and is the latest book in the side changeling series because i only listened to it the one time so i was like no i'm going to listen to you again because i enjoyed listening to you and it was wonderful wonderful background listening and started to catch up on a million podcasts <laughs> so much viewership so much viewership but that's it and then now i get to i get to take a break until the next thing catches my eye heavens only knows heavens only knows 
There's a new Lucifer TV series season out on Netflix. The Un- Umbrella Academy season two still hasn't been watched. There are things I need to get to. Winona Earp season four is airing. I couldn't get into that. I devoured seasons one through three in like less than a month. <laughs> Wow. Specifically, specifically because I saw season four was coming out and everybody was making this huge hairy deal with, about it. And I'm like, I've never watched this show. What's it about? It sounds vaguely interesting. I watched two episodes and I'm like, this is my show. I am so into this 100%. It's too dark. I, oh, I love the, the campiness and the one-liners. And oh, Maybe I'll give yeah. it a try, but I couldn't get into it the first time. But eh. I, first I time. enjoy it. I'm watching a procedural, police procedural call, it's named Lucifer, that revolves around Lucifer coming to Earth. I have watched four, the four seasons of that, and I am excited for season five. I know. It's out on Netflix. I know. We're going to watch it. We're soon. watching that. I'm watching that as, let's be honest, I'm watching that tonight. <laughs> Once we're done, I'll probably start binge watching it. We've been, been binging, uh, we've been binging Breaking Bad because I actually never watched it. And I somehow managed to avoid all the spoilers about how it ends, other than apparently the ending is good. I don't know, but I did, so don't spoil it. I'm so close. I'm, like, in the last season right now. I won't say anything, then. That's amazing. How the heck did you manage that? I managed to avoid all the spoilers. I don't spoil things for you for Critical Role. And you know how obsessed I am with that. Yes, I am on, like, episode 16 of that. So, you know, I've been watching that. (laughs) Watching that, not like it's my job, but, like... Like, like a part-time job. job. <laughs> it's a good, it's a good, I mean, I've watched the, I mean, I watched the campaign live. Uh, okay. Uh, things I've been reading, though, because we're supposed to be talking about books. Sorry. So it's late on a Sunday and I'm hungry. I'm just rambling. <laughs> and Critical Role is amazing. Oh, I love it so much. There's other D&D streams that are good. It's just Critical Role is the first one. It's, it's hard to go wrong with a table full of nerdy voice actors. It really is. It really is. Um, so I am still reading the Psy Changing series. I am still in book three because the romance is kind of samey from the first two books. It and is. so it's slightly a slog, but the overarching story is getting really interesting with the intrigue and the conspiracies and the side plots and the players you didn't know about before. And so I, I like the overarching story and you're, you're telling me that the romances get less samey. So I'm going to keep at you, it you it's because right now they're doing the like the first few books is focused in on the on the leopard pride like the leopard changelings so as soon yeah. as they start to branch out from the leopard changelings the world doubles and triples in complexity and she goes out like we we go all the way out but you just kind of you got to get past that first couple where it's it's that core group because it's very samey because they're it's always something changeling, and for the first part, it's psi changeling. But when she starts mixing it up, and you get psi, 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 human, human, changeling, 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 then it starts to get like a, an actual depth and complexity to it as far as the yeah. romance goes. It's, it's just that it's always the psi changeling, and the psi is always like, no, can't have yeah. emotions. Emotions are bad, except yeah. I have so many emotions. Oh no, I must be going insane. And yeah. it's, that's the third book. Yeah. You never really lose the sigh, I think, and they're going insane as they start to figure out how to deal with emotions. And I just think that's just because they don't know what to do. I would probably go insane too. But you start to you start to get outside views and stuff, so it starts to balance out okay. a lot. Um, but yeah, I've been going through that very slowly because I've mostly been watching Critical Role. That's fine. Uh, but today I had a very strong urge to pick up a physical book, and because of my proclamation that I'm only reading BIPOC authors for the rest of the year, I scoured all of my collection, all of Mr. Diana's collection, and the only thing that I could find that wasn't a textbook that was a BIPOC author, the only thing, which is embarrassing as heck, I found my copy of The Sky is Not the Limit, which is a memoir by Neil deGrasse Tyson, and, 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 I would just like to show this off. This is a signed copy, signed copy, because I met him. And there exists somewhere in the universe a picture where his arm is around me. Somewhere in the universe, in the University of Manitoba archives, there is this picture. I do not have this picture. You'll just have to take my word for it. And I'm excited because he's a very nice person who is famous that I was excited to meet. Forevermore, I'm only buying you BIPOC authors. That is sad. It really is. So, I think that's it, though. Is that it? 
I do believe that's it. That's everything mm-hmm. on my list. Cool. Well, and then I will say until next week, I'm Jocelyn. And I'm Diana. And no matter where your week takes you, don't, don't forget, forget to knit. knit. Ta-da! Woo! So this week's uh, title is going to be Handful of Body Parts. Handful of Body Parts.